Hello, and welcome to Seeking Heaven, the Near-Death Experience and Other Phenomena. I'm your host, Tamara Calder-Richardson, the six-time near-death experiencer, evidential medium, and channeler. Welcome to my channel. And today, I want to just jump right in and introduce my guest. I'm so excited. And our topic is fascinating. And that would be our guest speaker today is Deborah Hatswell from the UK. And she has her own investigation firm, BBR. And she is an encrypted investigator as well as the unknown, the mysterious. I have a, a case where we have numerous dogman sightings and a shoe is found with a foot in it, just the lower half of a foot. Nice. <laughs> in stock, and the, the police said, oh, there's no suspicious circumstances here whatsoever. This was a natural death. So, so somebody it? covered it up. They want these things covered up. Yeah, there's more than a little bit of covering up going on. There's a famous place in England called Canic Chase, and people who are into Dogman have heard of Canic Chase. I have 23 active cases down there at the moment. So a chap called Neil Coulter applied under the Freedom of Information Act, and what we wanted to know was, were any werewolves or strange beasts ever reported to the police? Now, in England, you've got to jump through some parameters, so they'll only give you a 10-year period. So we just said, right, from 2009 to 2019, how many were reported? Only in one area of the UK, so just one, one um, counter. There were 12 werewolves reported to the police, 865 beasts, because he didn't know what name to give it, 15,000 large cat reports, um, and our government will tell you there's no large cats over here at all. Um, and I was astounded at that. 12, wheel of, 12 people have contacted the police in one tiny area of the UK. Times that by all the other cats. Is there a base underneath there? Are they doing something? Are they doing DNA manipulation? What's going on? There's actually an army base there. There's two okay. things going on. So you've got an installation called the Pi Tower that was put up in World War II. Once again... It submits and retrieves signals. You have a German cemetery full of soldiers that died during the war. And most of the accounts happen around the German cemetery. Hmm. I started looking into cases, and I think me and you are going to do a show on it, where cryptids are seen on military bases. And we're wondering if, if, if they are actually military made. There's a very famous place in England called Bempton Cliffs. Um, I was there in May, in Mar uh, March of this year. And the team that I were out with, I didn't go out that night. They went out and I stayed back at the caravan and they captured something on film that was absolutely terrifying. At one point, they're down on, there's like three creatures and they're down on four legs. So down on all fours, but they're very thickly muscled. And then one chap seen them stand up. So they've managed to film it and they've got eye shine. Last week, um, I invited a lady to come down with us when we were down there. I said to her, Emma Jones, come along. And she was like, oh, she has MS, unfortunately. So it was too oh. much of a drive. Yeah. So she couldn't do it. So she said to me, she, only last week, I've took a week off and I've drove around Yorkshire and I've looked at all the sightings where the dog man are and I've absolutely enjoyed it. And me and my girlfriend have been out that night and we've seen it, Deb. We've seen it. As I turn around, it's there. She said, and there's not just one of them. There's three of them. A and they're down yeah, down on three, down on four legs, or up, stood up tall. I shine again. So I started researching the base. Numerous missing people. Oh, animals. Yeah. Are you ready for this one? Animals nailed to the wall. What kind of human does that? Yeah, you need to use a hammer to be able to do that. What color are their eyes? Are they red or are they amber? I've had red and amber. It comes up the most. That's the most reported for dogmen. Then yellow. Sometimes green and very rarely white. And it can depend sometimes on the light source that you're using. So whether you're using a camera or a torch, that can affect it. But mostly with dogmen, you tend to hear of this red eye. Now, that would tell me that was something angry. That's not something welcoming, something with red eyes. So yeah. I looked back, and in England, we have um, the shuck, the tale of the old shuck. And a shuck is like a black dog that brings possibly death to a family or a bad omen of some kind. Okay. And they seem to be seen with red eyes. But we also have the same history of a black dog that comes to walk your home when you die. And the name of that dog is Mac. And most of the Scottish clans are named for that dog. MacLeod, MacLennan, all yeah. of them. 
Mac, Mac means wolf. It's the old Scottish word for wolf. So even the Scots are named after wolves, if you get what I mean. All the names yeah. stem from there. Massive yeah. in England. And then one case that I don't get creeped out on cases very often. I'll be I'm like you, you hear it so often. I'm, you know, one did. Um the a chap got in touch with me just before we went into COVID. And he works for an um, electrical company. And he said, sometimes we have to go out into the middle of nowhere, Debbie, because people are not paying the bills. And we have to go in and, and, and make sure that they do that. He said, but also, there are properties out there that have had nobody in for 30 years, and we have to go and turn them off. So he pulls up in the thing, and there's nothing there. As he goes to get out of the van, there's a huge dog in the top window looking down at him. And there's another dog comes around the corner of the farm. So he said, I'm absolutely terrified. He said, I'm looking through the window. I can't see any dogs. He's got to go in with a locksmith. And that, he said, we're waiting for these dogs to come running after us. And they open the door and they go in. There's nothing in there. He said, nobody had been in there since the 1970s. There was no dog. There was nowhere the dog could have been. And the, the, the window started at shoulder height. So for it to have been stood there, oh man, it must have been up on two legs or levitating in some kind of way. You know, oh, and nobody right. wants nobody wanted to take that account. Only me. So, so it reminds me just of that uh, that movie that we were talking about earlier, Dog Soldiers. Which, when that came out, here I am in the U.S. Now I can't get enough movies like this. Now I have to go and find a farm one. So when this one came out, I really loved it. The concept that they were in the house of a family mm -hmm. that were that were werewolves, basically. Yeah. And it was called dog soldiers, but they were, and, and that they didn't realize that they were being taken over one by one by their own group. Why? Because they wanted them in their pack. Yeah. They wanted them being part of the pack not to kill them, kill them. I mean, if you were an enemy, yeah. So yeah. what is the, what do you think the purpose is? Obviously in that case, they did not want to be seen. So mm -hmm. Uh, I, I suppose some of them do not want to be seen. So if they were to be seen, why is it to feed or to intimidate? What's their purpose? I think it's a number of things. I think the ones on the bases, I think they're protecting the bases. I don't know if they're protecting. Oh my God, that just actually got it right. My solar plexus, that must be so true what you said, because I went, yes. Yeah, I they're that. protecting yeah. the bases and that's why they're there. What we don't know is what they're protecting us for. So is it something coming out? Or is it something coming in? We don't know that. That's, But no. lots and lots and lots of bases in the UK have these type of stories. I really? think it is down to the individual. I really do, Tamara. I think some of them are just outright feeders. They're there just to feed, just to terrify you. I think some of them are very benevolent and they're there to help. And I think some of them just couldn't give a monkeys about us human beings. They'd much prefer we didn't have any interaction with them whatsoever. The way I, it was explained to me was they have nothing to fear from us at all. There's nothing we can do to them. They can take us out in a heartbeat. A lot of them will look at human beings with almost with scorn or with ridicule as if we are the lesser being. Well, we are in their eyes. That's what I'm saying. So in their eyes, we are. So that's a natural thing for them, isn't it? It's just, yeah. They just go on and on the stories like that. Where I live, we had 15 sheep killed in one lambing season, but they weren't killed in a cat-like way. Cat, a cat will take a bite of the neck and it will take it down. Mm -hmm. A dog, a normal domestic dog is a really messy eater on a farm. So if a dog's attacking sheep, you know it's a domestic dog. They leave a right mess behind. What we've got is sheep that have been rammed into a wall and have the spines twisted. And oh, then the fleece oh is removed from the body. And you can only do that by a hand, like you would with a chicken. Right. So somebody's removed that fleece. There's no blood on the ground. There's no disturbance on the ground. So it's a sport. It's, exactly. It's a sport. It's a, it's sport. a sport. Yeah. Yeah, because why would they go to that extra trouble to remove that? It's not like they were being tidy while they're eating. It was a sport and because they could. So uh, what about their intellect? I wonder, I mean, could you reason with one of these things that someone ever came across from it? Obviously, you want to not be near it. Uh, but, I mean, can you reason with one of these things? I mean, how what, what would be the plan if you ever came across one? <sighs> Telepathy, would they know that? I, I think they would. 
I think I was going to say, I think intent has a lot to do with it. I think yeah. if you go into an area and you're completely camoed up and you've got guns and you've got all, I think they're instantly going to dislike you because that's what you're doing. Um, I think there are packs out there that hunt because we wouldn't have so many missing. We've got to account for the missing people that go. And there's a case in my town where the boy was on the phone for an hour and a half screaming. His parents can hear howling. They put the phones together with the police. So the police are listening to this as well. And they didn't even come out. They found his phone six weeks later. They didn't record the telephone conversation. Every single call that's made to 999 in the UK is automatically taped. I think it's the same in America, isn't it? Yes. Or that was the only call for the whole of that year that didn't get taped. That is absolutely ridiculous. The mum said he was he was howling in the background and this boy screaming his head off for an hour and a half. There's a definite cover-up. And, and there's probably more than that. It's more of a communication. If there's something that happens in this area, mm -hmm. don't ask. There's 90 there men. Where he's gone from, there are 90 men missing from 2007 to this year where they cannot find the bodies. They've just gone on that stretch of waterway. So right in that same area. So you're right. There is some kind of a, uh, and they probably say, look, within, there's probably some way they communicate within this area, go for it. Otherwise they would leave that area, yes. right? So mm -hmm. there's a reason they leave. I mean, I could <laughs> make a bad joke and say they have one of those electronic fences <laughs> like for dogs, mm -hmm. but <laughs> they could, uh, but they stay in that area for a particular reason. And you were talking about like a raised in a, or, or developed or created in a lab as a, dog super soldier type thing mm. which would could be but then you think how you know if something is this wild how would you train that how would you make it be obedient when obviously they mm. don't really need to listen to anybody or anything no. that that's it how powerful are the beings that are controlling them that's my thought that dog man could yes. take out most so what's controlling it what is that powerful that that can be controlled that's and the question you know, and that's gone on for millennia in my country and yours. You know, Very every nice. native culture it, across the world, and I haven't found one country yet that doesn't have a history of a dog, canine, human. They're here. Yeah, yep, we have. I told you Jody Cook in the U.S., mm. and he has a team of military people, and they go, there's stories similar, and they go look for them. They, they do, uh, there are a little bit of differences, I think, in certain parts of, like, the U.S., they're bigger than other parts. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. That, but that makes sense. It's genetics, that, isn't it? I live in a tiny island, um, and animals adapt to where they live, don't they? Yeah. One of the sticks that the skeptics beat me with is that the U.K. is too small to have cryptids. So I say, well, if they're dimensional, you don't need an area, do you? They can pop up wherever they want. True. But I looked, I looked on the government statistics, only 10% of the UK is urban. And that includes roads, motorways, hospital, schools, house, only 10%, that leaves 90% open land. Well, I don't know what the, I'll have to look at that. I don't know what the statistics are here, but same thing. We yeah. have, you see these things on TV, large cities, but most, no, they have, uh, they're smaller areas. Some are very rural, mm -hmm. uh, like where I live uh, in in the South of uh, you know, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. We have the city. You go a little further out, you have the suburbs. And if you go 30, 45 minutes out, you're going to be in the woods. I mean, Louisiana, you have the loop guru, the Rue guru, as they call yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That, that, they, they think that that was... Werewolf. But, you know, a werewolf that was brought over by the French because that's their word for the werewolf, the French. So yeah, I've got uh, dogman accounts in Finland, Sweden, France. Let me get it yeah. on my... Germany. Yes. There was a chap doing... Um, there was a conference two years ago in America and there was quite a few famous cryptozoologists there. And a chap came up to speak to them and he wanted to tell them about his dogman report. And that happened in Germany. And because it happened in Germany, they wouldn't take him off. They, just, they don't exist outside the, the America. What? Well, they don't. They don't that's exist outside crazy. America. They're, that's crazy. They're everywhere. I mean, you actually find these similar stories, which is fascinating to me, mm -hmm. on Bigfoot or different cryptids or different, you know, there. yeah, you may have more stories on the little people in Ireland than in the U.S., but I guarantee you it's here, too. It's it's yeah. definitely, when you got, look, there are crazy stuff. When you get on the Appalachian Trail, there's 
there's a lot of, when you're in the deep woods, there's all sorts of things. There's all sorts of stories that are very similar to where they are around the world. Well, I know that we can't solve this, this case. Yeah. I think it's fascinating. I do want to ask you, do they target, do you think, I mean, cause we, I don't know if there's enough evidence to know this. Do they target certain types of people or is it just being a person at the wrong place at the wrong time? I think both. I know it's probably not the answer I want to get. I think some people, I call them the unfortunate fortunates. I think some people just see them. They, they bump into them kind of thing. But, yeah, I do think they target certain people because you start to look at your witnesses and you're thinking, it's normally people like me who've kind of never felt like they fitted in. Growing up, I was always a bit left of centre of everybody else. They seem to have got worked life out, and I never did. I was a bit of a loner. And I saw things when I was younger. And when I speak to people, they tend to be the same. They're not antisocial. They're just happy in their own company. They're quite yeah. open-minded. Um, they've probably experienced some things in maybe in teenage years or younger years. Um, and some people just have a genuine interest and they don't know where it comes from. I speak to a lot of people who say, oh, I've always been fascinated by them. I don't know why. I just love the programs about them. I, I love things. Um, and I hear that more than more often than not, that people are actually fascinated by them. Well, if you're putting right that energy out into the universe, so the universe will reply. So if you I mean if you're the type of person that wants right. to have interaction, what I would do is I would suggest that when you have the conversation, you say that you're not ready to see them in their full form. You want you've got questions and you want answers, but you'd like them to soften themselves down. And they will do that. They will appear in a very different way. You can even ask to not see them at all. So then you will just get audible messages or you get like me, I have a knowing. It's not an actual voice. It's I just know. I know it and I don't know how I know it. And I think they're like, some of them are like guides. I think like attracts like. So they yes. see our light. And, and, and recognize it as like their own and, and they want to be part of that you know and our light can repel others so well you're 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 spot on my husband he always has a saying and i think it's very true he said if if you look hard enough for what you want in life it's going to find you yeah. so i think <laughs> it's true right whatever you focus on so yeah. to me i have um i have a respect for this uh creature uh, mm -hmm. but I am fascinated and I would admire them. I, I don't want to be close to them and hang out, yeah, I, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I, yeah, I don't want to be in any harm in any way, but I find it that they are, um, they're, uh, amazing, you know, that mm -hmm. they're, that they're, they are amazing. So, uh, does the silver bullet work? You know, I don't know. Would a silver no, bullet no. work? I mean, it'd have to be an elephant gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think I think in the US and Canada, people have actually shot at them and it's done nothing. It's not it even nothing. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, what would it take? And then you think, well, you know, are they dark? Is it because the whole premise of the silver bullet is you bless what was it supposed to be? The coins that would the Judas gave uh, they gave Judas to kill, you know, Christ set him up anyway. Uh, there's a spiritual aspect to that with the silver, but yeah. reality, what would really kill it? Because you figure that height, the muscle, the skeletal, the skeletal structure, you know, it's probably very heavy and dense. So, mm -hmm. Uh, what would it take to really uh, kill it? You know, uh, I don't know if we would have that kind of uh, ammunition. And, and you know, I, to think be I think this technology out there that the government have, that yeah. they've, got to be like able, that. they've got to be able to control them somehow, haven't they? That's a <laughs> yeah. job, yes, you know. <laughs> I think there is. I think there's, there's something maybe that can affect them and we don't know about it. We, yeah, like. Plasma guns, sonic yeah, hearing. Might, if they're a dog, some kind of sonic hearing, bam, gun. You know, my, in my country, back in the olden days, there was the very first humans here were called the picks, and the picks understood plants so much that they could take out an entire armor by using apple pips. Because if you leave right. them in the sun, it makes cyanide. So then they'd feed them to the Romans, and the Romans would die. So <laughs> well, they'd put them in the water. So. So there is always a way of getting rid of your enemy. Sometimes you just have to think outside the box. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hopefully they will stay hidden and uh, we can study them from afar. And it is a fascinating topic. And I thank you for being on the Seeking Heaven channel. 
You are always a delight. And make sure everybody that you check out the links below with Deborah and also watch her on the other episodes where she talks about the Mediterranean Sea Serpent and the British Bigfoot, as well as the reptilian humanoid. So there's more to come from her. She's a wealth of information. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you for inviting me on, Tamara. Please subscribe, like, and make comments, and support this channel by becoming a member. Thank you for your continued support.